Now we want to get into this book here, The Queen of Sheba and the Only Son, Minulik the First. The Queen of Sheba and Son Minulik the First, as it has been uh, translated by um, uh, E. A. Wallace Budge, The Queen of Sheba and the Only Son Minulik. Now, this particular book right here, this is a maybe a little better cover shot of it. You understand? Um, this particular book right here. Queen of Sheba, Only Son, Minulik. This is what's called the title page, um, a type of a color phone right here. And it says, being, the, this book, this is the title that the translator chose to describe the story in it. Now, there's a connection that this has to the modern and the present black men's uh, movement or the church for men only and uh, even the black town the black town movement as we really get into the story and we start to understand the half of the story that hasn't been told to us for ourselves now it says that this book being the book of the glory of kings the kibra neges or the kebra some say the kibra neges but it's kibra neges a work which is alike the traditional history of the establishment of the religion of the hebrews in ethiopia and patent of sovereignty which is now universally accepted in Abyssinia as the symbol of the divine authority to rule which the kings of the Solomonic line claimed to have received through their descent from the house of David now as you can see it says translated from the Ethiopic if you look up Ethiopic Ethiopic is a Shemitic language is a language of Shem now, we've been told a lot of lies concerning the whole Ham, Shem, and Japheth story from uh, racist um, religionists and white supremacy. But this right here is a half of the story that hasn't been told until the present time. Now, we need to understand what it's really saying here. That this title for the book, The Queen of Sheba and Only Son Minulik, being, in other words, it's actually the book of the glory of kings, the Kibra Neges, it's a work which is alike, which is likened to the traditional history of the establishment. You get that of the religion of the Hebrews, the religion of the true black Hebrews, the true Hebrews, not the converted Khazar or the Edomite so-called Jews that people believe are the Jews. But the Bible says, I know the blasphemy of them who call themselves Jews and are not. You understand? And that's speaking of the other Jews, but here it's speaking of the true Jews, the half of the story that they like to suppress or like to put doubts out there. So the establishment, the history of the establishment of the religion of the Hebrews, and it says Ethiopia, Ethiopia. Look up Ethiopia in a good Webster's dictionary. Look up all the references. We did it with uh, another video that we, we just um, recorded, but we actually need to do it in this fashion where you can see actually what it says for itself, you know, what's, what's being said in the text itself. Now, it says that this is, this is and the patent of sovereignty, the patent of sovereignty, the patent of sovereignty, sovereignty meaning we are sovereign. This is another issue that is very much in the news, sovereignty. Some black people talk about the Moors and Moorish, but here we're speaking about Ethiopian Hebrew sovereignty, sovereignty which is now universally accepted in Abyssinia, another name that certain um, Arabs and Ottoman Turks have given to Ethiopia. It's not the true name, but it's a name that some um, Orientalist what they call Orientalist European scholars and the scholiasts and the bibliolators like to use this particular name instead of this name. They're trying to replace this name and then tell you that this name comes from Greek. You understand? We just did a video that actually breaks that down and shows that this actually comes from the land of Tob or the good land. You understand? Or Tobia, which is in the Bible and the oldest and the oldest um, version of this is Tobia. And the Greeks spun it for their own narrative. But anyway, universally accepted in Abyssinia as the symbol of the divine authority to, this is very important. See, we highlighted it, this right here, the symbol of the divine authority to rule. 
which the kings of the Solomonic line, this is a black African line of kings that go back to 3,000 years earlier and older than any so-called European whitewash traditions, modern-day Jewish blah, blah, blah. You understand the Solomonic line claimed to have what? Received to Kabbalah, Kabbalah, through their descent. And here's the key, the true house of David, from the house of David. Now, what's the connection of this to the the men's movement or the black men's movement? Why, why are we touching on this and saying that there's a connection here to the black men's movement? Let's see if we can find the particular... Um, page right here and we have to find the section where it is speaking about um, King Solomon how King Solomon sent how King Solomon sent 1,000 from each of the tribes of Israel to uh, renew the kingdom of David in Ethiopia to renew this, to preserve this kingdom of David in Ethiopia. Now, here, this chapter here, 38, it says how the king planned to send away his son with the children of the nobles. <coughs> oh, man, oh, man. Now, it says, uh, 37 says how Solomon qu asks his, his son questions. Now, what we have to understand is what part of the story is this, biblically speaking, because a lot of confusion about um, Solomon, his, his, his 700 wives and 300 princes and, and concubines, and, and Solomon's marrying Pharaoh's daughter. Many are confused. Many assume that Pharaoh's daughter was the Queen of Sheba, and the two women were two different two different women, you understand, but we know that Solomon later on and later in his life, he, his heart did not fully follow after Yahweh, and he fell to idolatry, you understand, and he started to worship the idols. In other words, Solomon in his later days fell away from the true worship of God and, 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 and his, the way of his father David, and he worshipped basically the the idols of his strange wives. Strange wives. You understand? His only true wife was the queen of Sheba or Nagist Amakita. This was his true wife. Not even Pharaoh's daughter. That was for political expediency when he was building the temple. Now, if you look in Kings chapter, First Kings chapter uh, nine, um, three. And you go to First Kings chapter ten, and you go to First Kings chapter eleven. You can see clearly there are three different um, females or, 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 or female types. There is the there is Pharaoh's daughter. There is the Queen of Sheba, and then there is there is the Queen of Sheba, and then there is. Um, the strange woman that Solomon, that Solomon had um, married, taken as wives, and it shows how these women turned his heart away. That's likened today to the feminist movement, the so-called feminism, and how it has destroyed, you understand, or helped to further destroy and downgrade and degrade and denigrate the black man and destroy the black family. But in connection with the black male men's movement or the, or, or the men's movement, it's this chapter here that is particularly interesting. It talks about how the king planned to send away his son with the children of the nobles. It says right here, and then Solomon the king went back into his house and caused to be gathered together his counselors and his officers and the elders of the kingdom. And he said to them, I am not able to make this young man, young man consent to dwell here. In other words, the queen of Sheba and King Solomon's firstborn son, Named variously Ebna Hakim, Baina Lechem, Minulik, but most known as David the Second. David had a son named Solomon, and Solomon had a son named David, and he would renew the kingdom of David in Africa 
in, 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 in Africa, in Ethiopia, in the highlands of Ethiopia. And this has been preserved for 3,000 years, and this exposes the lies of a whitewashed um, so-called Judaism and Christianity. Right? It says, Solomon says, I'm not able to make this young man consent to dwell here, and now hearken ye to me and to what I say to you. Come, let us make him king of the country of Ethiopia, king of the country of Tobia, of the land of Tob, together with your children. Ye sit on my right hand and on my left, and in like manner the eldest of your children will sit on his right hand and on his left hand. Come, O ye counselors and officers, let us give him your firstborn children, and we shall have two kingdoms. You understand, when the Bible now mystically speaks about these two kingdoms, some assume that it's speaking about the ten northern tribes, you understand, who went into Babylon and, 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 and Assyria and, and were destroyed, the Bible says, and Judah, which was preserved, and a remnant went to the, this kingdom in Ethiopia. But he says, we shall have two kingdoms. I will rule here with you, and our children shall reign there, and I put my trust in God that a third time, that a third time he will give me seed, and that a third king will be to me. Now, what's important for us to understand about this portion here, about this portion here in Scripture you understand, is that it was 1,000 children, 1,000 sons, 1,000 sons were chosen, were chosen, 1,000 sons were chosen from each of the tribes of Israel. So that was a black men's movement. That was a, that was a men's movement, you understand, in ancient times, which had preserved, which had preserved the truth of, 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 of the Bible, of the true identity of the true ethnic Hebrews and Israelites, and goes further to prove that the Israelites mentioned the Bible and the Hebrews mentioned the Bible were black, were black. Now, we're going to go into this a little bit um, more because some of the chapters here, it talks about the Ten Commandments. You understand the Ten Commandments here? It talks about how the, the men of the army of Israel receive their orders. Now, th this might be of importance right here. It says, and the city rejoiced because the king had made his son king. Remember it says there's a psalm for the king's son, and Ethiopia is in that particular psalm, but from the King James Version, they suppress that. But when we go into the older Bibles, the Ethiopic Bibles, we find that Ethiopia is written, I think it's Psalm, what is 70, 72, and had appointed him king from his own from his, from his own territory to that of another. But the city sorried, sorried, also, it says, because the king had commanded that they should give their children who were called firstborn. So the firstborns of the Beta Israel went with Solomon and the queen of Sheba's firstborn to renew the kingdom of David in inner Africa, in Ethiopia. So here we see the firstborn, and it says, and those who were on the right hand should sit in the same way as their father sat with King Solomon. Even so should they sit on the right hand with his son David, the king of Ethiopia. And those who were on the left hand should sit as their father sat with King Solomon. Even so should they sit on the left hand of his son David, so David, so this is David the second, the king of Ethiopia, and their rank, it says, and their rank be like those of their fathers, and their names should be like those of their fathers, 
and each should be according to his ordinance, and each according to his greatness, and each according to his position of authority, and each according to his wages, and each according to his rank. In this wise shall they be. As Solomon did to his nobles, so shall David do to his nobles. Now it's very interesting because here we're getting a here we're getting a, 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 a list over here where it says that Solomon ordained for his uh, governors. So shall David order the direction of his house. And here we're getting a list. Here's a list of those um, governors who accompanied King David, uh, King David the second. You understand the, the the grandson of David the first, the son of Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. And we find out that all of these were the firstborn sons of the the nobles of the twelve tribes of Israel. And it will tell us that their number was one thousand from each tribe. Now, as we go forward, we got another note right here, and it says, And they made ready to set out, and though there was great joy with the nobles of the king of Ethiopia, there was sadness with the nobles of, king, of the king of Israel, because through the firstborn son of Solomon, king of Israel, that is to say, the king of Ethiopia, the firstborn sons of the nobles of Israel were given to rule over the country of Ethiopia with the son of Solomon the king. Now, when it says the country of Ethiopia, and you probably have to look this up, and we'll do this in another video where we'll show you exactly what, the, what even today's Webster's actually says, that when it speaks about Ethiopia and Ethiopic, that uh, Ethiopia, the continent, is Ethiopia. They still tell you this today in better dictionaries. It says, then they assembled together, it says, and wept together with their fathers and their mothers and their relations and their kinfolk and their peoples and their countrymen, and they cursed the king secretly. You see that right here? They had cursed Solomon secretly and reviled him because he had seized their sons against their will. So it was the sons who were, who were sent. You see this right here? And they cursed the king secretly. This is where the real rise of the so-called secret societies in Israel happened from because they did not understand the prophecy of the Almighty that was being worked out, and they reviled him because he had seized their sons, their sons. Not the daughters were sent with Menelik, with David II, but the sons. So we have 1,000 from each of the 12 tribes, 12,000 in total. What a men's movement. But... To the king they said, because thou, because of this, thou hast done well, and thy wisdom is so good that the kingdom of Israel by the will of God and by thy wisdom extendeth. So see that the kingdom of Israel extendeth to the country of Ethiopia. And God will gather together the other kingdoms of the world into thy hand, for thou hast a right mind toward God. This is before Solomon had went into the strange wives. This is before he had, in his old age, committed such abomination and reproach in Israel. So there was a remnant that was already preserved in, in Africa in the highlands of Ethiopia. And thou wishest that they shall serve, look, who shall they serve? They shall serve the God of Israel, not the gods of the strange wives or other nations, the God of Israel. This is Ethiopia stretching forth his hands to God. And that idols may be destroyed out of the world. That what? It says that idols may be destroyed out of the world. And they praised him and said to him, Now know we that 
God, Ha Elohim, Hashem, spake concerning thee to our father Abraham when he said, In thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed, be Baruch, Baruch, Baruch. And they made their faces to appear happy, and they jested before him, and they praised him exceedingly, fulsomely, because of his wisdom and when they said these things to him he understood them in his wisdom and he bore let's turn the page and he bore with them it says and he bore with them and he bore with them um, patiently now God here beareth with us patiently knowing well all our Khatiyat, our sin, and the whole earth and heavens and the ends of the world and the sea and the dry land are the kingdoms of God. He judges, and he hath given the earth to the king to be subject to him that he may judge or rule as he doth. Those who do evil, those who do what it says, those who do evil, so that he may requite with requite them with evil and those who do good so that he may reward them with good for the spirit of god resteth in the heart of the king and his hands are in his mind and his knowledge is in his understanding now there's a chapter that follows where it says how it is not a seemly thing to revile the king, which is kind of very important. Ethiopia should have been reminded of that, you understand, when it fell. You understand, um, recently with the, the, the coup or the, the creeping coup against his imperial majesty. So this is just basically to show that this was a men's movement, a man's movement right here, a men's movement that established... You understand that established um, that established that kingdom of David in the highlands in the highlands of Ethiopia.